Hi everyone. So this how-to is all about Hanamul Velour Pastel Paper and it's my favourite pastel paper to use. It's one of the many pastel papers on the market and it's always worth experimenting with as many different ones as you can. But I love to use this stuff and I get asked about it all the time. As quite often when you're starting out with pastel, you can encounter some problems on it. So I thought I'd make a quick video giving you some of my top tips for working on velour pastel paper. Enjoy the video. So this is a piece that I'm currently working on on velour. You can see I've just got a ghostly dog left to work on. But some of the many reasons that I love velour, um, many people know the paper because of pet portraits. And it's wonderful for animal portraits because of its soft, um, almost fuzzy texture. Uh, but I also find that I can achieve really high detail, not just fuzziness. Um, I can get really sharp lines when I want to. And I paint everything from interiors to landscapes, um, people portraits, pets and wildlife. And I just love how versatile it is on a range of different subjects. The velour paper I use is made by a German company called Hanemul. I'll add links to where you can purchase some uh, in the description underneath the video. But it comes in several different sizes and also different colours. I tend to buy my loose sheets, the 50 centimetres by 70 centimetres sheets. And although there are different colours available, I mainly stick to their light yellow one of the light greys and also a nice sandy colour. And between those three colours uh, I cover landscapes, uh, people portraits, pet portraits, pretty much everything. Um, but you can see the main problem I have with this paper is just how floppy it is. Um, there is no uh, support to the paper and I would dread to think if I had a full pastel painting on here what this type of action would do to it. So. If you find that you've done a painting on velour and it has later on had a lot of pastel fall off, this might be one of the problems. And I actually have a full video on my YouTube channel here about what I do to firm the paper up. And I use a self-adhesive mount board and mount my paper so that it becomes a firm board. And that's what I've done with this piece, which when I take it off my drawing board, it will still be a nice firm board, much easier for framing and also just for handling it in general. So that's my main issue with uh, the velour paper is how floppy it is. Um, you can actually buy your velour paper from Dakota Pastels in the US. So if you're in the US, you can buy it pre-mounted. Uh, it's obviously more expensive than just the sheets, but it does save you the hassle of having to mount it yourself. And also I thought I would show you, although I don't know if it fits on camera, this is a very large 40 inch sheet of velour paper which I source from Dakota Pastels in the US and sometimes I work really large scale for landscapes and again I would mount this before working on it just to take any floppiness out of the paper. But I'll add links to where you can find this paper worldwide in the description below. My second tip for working on velour is to sketch onto another piece of plain drawing paper, sketch your outline on there, and then use that to transfer your line drawing onto the velour paper. As it's very difficult to sketch onto, um, pencils feel a little bit scratchy when you're trying to draw on it. You also can't rub out or remove any lines, so those lines might later on show through your painting uh, where you've wanted to remove lines in your initial sketch. Again, I have a full video on my YouTube channel covering how I transfer an image onto the velour nice and cleanly to get started. My next tip is to work in thin layers and be sure to rub in all the layers into the tooth of the paper. So I don't uh, apply pastel too heavy handed. I try and uh, apply thinner washes of colour um, and when I'm adding the first layer of colour onto the paper, I try not to fill the tooth too much. So thin layers are really key and also to make sure that you rub all of your layers really well into the paper. And if you watch any of my tutorials here on YouTube, 
you'll see a lot of the time I'm making sure that those layers are well rubbed into the paper. If you can see any pastels sitting on the surface of the paper at the end of your painting, then you, you may well run into some problems um, with framing, with uh, too much dust falling off the piece. So make sure that when you're finished, you can't see too much uh, pastel pigment sitting caked on the surface of the paper. You'll know that you've oversaturated the paper during the painting process. But as well as that, if you want to make bold marks and uh, add a splash of vibrance somewhere and be a little heavier handed, of course I do use the pastels a little heavier at times. And if I make a mark that I really want to stay uh, accentuated and uh, really vibrant, then I'll just make sure that I, I really press the pigment into the paper afterwards and again just try to not leave any pigments sitting caked on the surface of the paper. One thing that you can try with velour is a fixative. Um, it's not something that I've used in the past uh, five or six years but when I first started out on velour I would work my lower layers and then give it a quick spray with fixative, work my next layer give that little spray with fixative and unlike on a lot of pastel papers the fixative doesn't really darken your image too badly so you can put quite a lot of fixative on this paper but I would never recommend spraying it too much at the very end of your piece as you will dull it a little bit. But you can use fixative on this and certainly when I was learning to use velour I did use it. Now I think I just I use all of my other techniques a little more um, with the thin layers, blending it all well in, um, several things combined and also trying to be a little looser and more painterly and get to the finished effect using less pastel. Um, so all of that combined makes my work very stable on this paper. But if you're encountering problems with it, it's likely a couple of these things that I'm talking about and hopefully you can overcome that and start to enjoy some of the benefits of using velour. Of course, it's not a paper for everyone. I've heard some people uh, on first feel of the paper uh, recoil in horror because it feels quite strange. So uh, it is a bit of an acquired taste, but once you do get used to it, you can produce some lovely effects on it. Another thing to consider when you're working on different pastel papers is that all the different pastels on the market are very different as well and they range from different textures um, from hard right through to very soft pastels and I would recommend that you use the harder scale of pastels on the velour nothing softer than the uh, unison pastels these are the main pastels that I love to use and if you go anything that's either as soft as unison or slightly harder this should be fine on the velour paper. Uh, I've often found that the Schminkies and the Sennelliers are just a little bit too soft for this paper. It tends to fall off too easily. But sometimes I can make use of uh, one particular vibrant colour for a splash of colour and really press it into the paper. But for the majority of my work, I stick to anything that is not any softer than the Unison Pastels. I also, in my work, make use of the hard Faber-Castell sticks and also some Faber-Castell pit pencils. So you can use a variety of uh, different types of pastel together on the one paper. As with any pastel painting, there are a few specific ways to frame that will ensure their longevity. And with velour, I use a few different methods of framing for my very small work. I will frame with a mount and that often makes a little more of the piece, adds a little more space around the piece and when I have a mount in my frame I always make sure that there is some space between the piece and the mount so that any excess dust can fall down into that gap and that's quite a common way to frame a pastel painting but for my larger pieces, so my 40 inch landscapes I will actually frame those with the velour tied against the glass. So no mount surrounding the painting and the piece actually touching the glass. And that works specifically for velour um, and it seems to create a bit of a squish and just keeps everything in place. This has been a really effective way of framing some of my larger works. 
And my third method of framing is where I don't use a mount, but there is some space between the pastel painting and the glass. So I use a wooden inner slip, then the layer of glass, and then my outer moulding. And this is a method that I use quite a lot for my medium to large work. So if you can work on some of the techniques I've mentioned here, hopefully you'll be able to give your framer a much easier job when it comes to framing your work. And as a final note, I would always give uh, some instructions of care to the new owners of your piece, especially if you're posting it unframed to your client. I would always include a little uh, sheet in there with some instructions for caring for a pastel, including keeping it covered over until they get it framed, simple things like that, just to ensure the safety of your piece. So I hope you enjoy uh, getting started on velour if you haven't already tried it and I hope some of these tips help you find your way a bit quicker. It was a strange paper for me at the start too, it took me a while to get used to, so I hope you find this helpful. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube and I also have a Patreon channel where you can get lots of really in-depth tutorials. That's been going for about a year now, so there's lots of content already on there. Until next time, happy pastling.